Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make something out of nothing and we're going to use the negative painting technique or a version of it to achieve that. So let's get started. So I'm working on my 7x10 Canson Mixed Media art journal page and if you've watched me before you know that I take it off the coil and that allows me to work fast, flat, which allows it to be a whole lot easier. I've taped off the top to get a straight edge at the end. Now I am mixing white gesso and turquoise paint and I'm applying it to the gessoed page with a makeup sponge. I am not trying to get one tone. In fact, I absolutely do not want one tone. I want those variations in tone. I want to see all this texture. This is a way you can add without hardly any effort at all. Now I've grabbed this Leafy Fans stencil and I grabbed a baby wipe and I'm trying to remove the paint through the stencil. Now I'm getting eh, eh, results here because I've allowed the paint to dry somewhat. So if I was going to do this, and I knew I was going to try this technique of removing paint through a stencil, I would have done just half of the page with color and then removed the paint before it had time to dry. Never you mind, that is a layer. So now I'm just taking some turquoise paint and I am stenciling through randomly onto the background. Now I know at this stage that I am planning to go in a oriental Japanese theme and I'm loving how this leafy fan stencil, in my mind at least, goes with that theme. I just want a nice interesting background. Some of the areas are more opaque blue, some are lighter, I'm loving all that variation. And again, it's easy to do. Now this stencil, I don't know if it has a name, but it's a Stemperia stencil and it's from the um, that Sir Vagabond in Japan. And it has these symbols, Japanese symbols, and I want some of that. And I'm using black because I want contrast. Again, I'm just making a background and while I do have an idea of what's coming next, sometimes that changes, as is the case with this page. I didn't like that splotch, so I'm re grabbing a baby wipe, wiping it down, and I'll just reapply some color or stenciling on top of that, and no one's the wiser. That's how easy it is. If you don't like something, you can change it. This stencil is called Posies in a Row, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm using purple and I'm just randomly putting this on. <coughs> Again, I'm, I'm looking to create a oriental Japanese-like background. And I've noticed that many times when I've gone in that theme, I've gone in the oranges and reds, and so I deliberately chose to stay away from orange and red this time and try a different color scheme, and that's why I'm doing the purples and the blues. I am drawing between layers. Now this is the dotted ring stencil and I'm grabbing some black acrylic paint on my makeup sponge and I'm applying that just to add this very fine um, pattern across. Do I really want to see all these circles? No, I'm not trying to get a perfect stencil. I'm building interest in my background. If you're not already a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and then click on the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. Another thing you can do is like my video or leave a comment. That lets YouTube know that you like what you see and it helps me out. 
I'm just edging this with Prussian blue. And I guess I didn't use black for the dotted ring stencil. I used Prussian blue. Now this fan is a printable from supercoloring.com. And originally I planned on gluing it down. But I decided that I am going to instead use it as a template and trace the fan and use shading slash negative painting to make this fan come out from what is right now just a background. So I traced it with my Inktense pencil, which once activated is permanent. And then I'm shading with my angle brush and some Prussian blue paint. And as I go, you're going to see out of the background come this fan. So I'm basically creating a focal point from the background. And I'll keep adding more Prussian blue and more shading to get the level, to, to get the fan to stand out as much as I want it to. So I'm putting the fan back on and I want those lines there. And so I'm sliding a piece of graphite paper underneath and using a stylus to make those lines. Now, you're gonna see another way I can make those lines. You definitely could have freehanded this, but I'm giving you an option. If you want to trace a printable, getting some graphite paper and doing this and transferring it onto the background, you can see the very light marks works. Alternatively, I could have just done this, taken my Inktense pencil and a ruler and drawn those lines in. Because I kind of wanted them straight anyways. So now you have two ways or three ways to do the same thing. You pick whichever one fits your comfort, line, comfort zone best. So now I'm just shading again. I'm activating the Inktense pencil and adding a little bit of Prussian blue to bring out the details of the fan and creating a fan out of the background. Where do you start when you start a page? Do you start with a theme? Do you start with a color scheme? Do you start with a focal image? There is no right or wrong. And, and at different times, I start with all of those. Let me know where you start usually in the comment section below. I realized I forgot a line here, so I'm just freehanding it. Now you know why I use a ruler. I decided the bottom part of the fan, I'm going to give it a wash of Prussian blue. I am not obliterating what's underneath. I'm simply giving it a wash by watering down the acrylic paint. And then I decide I need to add more shading to really bring out the folds of the fan. My phone was acting up, so I did lose some footage coming up here but don't worry, I'll walk you through all the steps. Here I'm taking white and going around the fan. This is because I want the fan to stand out a little bit more. And then I give a wash of, a very light wash of the white paint across the rest of the background. Basically lightening the negative space. which is going to make the focal image, the fan, stand out. I 
And there you can see I'm applying that light wash of white paint across all parts of the background that are not the fan. I want to subdue them. I want to push that back. And giving a wash of paint, whatever color, will do that. I'm just adding a few highlights on the fan. If you really wanted that fan to stand out, I could have painted the whole background a dark Prussian blue, and then it might have really popped, or even black. Ooh, I kind of like the idea of putting the black in the background and then, hmm. Now, this is another printable from supercoloring.com. I size these flowers and now I'm just editing them. I'm just cutting off some of the leaves just to make each one look different. And I thought this would look really cute on the fan. Now, full disclosure, my plan was originally to glue the fan down and decorate it, make an interesting background, glue the fan down, colorize the fan, and then have these flowers coming off the bottom of the, flat, the fan. That was my idea. That is not what happened. This is a Stamperia set, and I'll link it in the, in the description box. I took a stamp, stamped this girl, and I'm thinking, I could put her on the fan, and I grabbed a sentiment from my Grateful, Thankful, Blessed sentiment pack, and we've now figured out the rest of this page. So once I'm happy with where these flowers are, I'm going to glue them down. So you can see with two printables and a background, I've created my fan focal image. I created something out of nothing. Or I mix and matched. I could have left it like this. I'm loving this fan just as it is. Could have thrown a sentiment on it and been done. Here I'm taking a coat of white gesso and gessoing over the printable. These printables I just printed on copy paper. This gives it kind of a painted um, look to it. And it's going to prepare everything to be shaded. Now that's the fit square, the, the footage that I lost. So I simply took my angle brush and some black acrylic paint and shaded around the blossoms just to make them stand out and add some of those details back in. Here I'm doing the same thing to the girl. I'm shading around the girl to make her stand out. And then I do some shading on the stamp part itself just to bring out certain things. But because my background is so beautifully colored, I just didn't want any competing colors. So I stuck with the black and white and gray tones. Here I'm shading around the sentiment. Black acrylic paint on my angle brush using the floating acrylic shading technique that I use so often. So while this isn't the page that I first thought I was going to create, I do love it. I'm heating up the ta tape so it releases its glue and taking it off. And there we have it done. What do you think? Close-ups of the finished project follow. Until next time, go get creative.